Welcome everybody, bienvenidos to Spirit Matters, your daily podcast. Um, although we haven't been daily for a while, but we're back on track. We've been, Chuta and Kishore have been in India for a while. We had an episode yesterday and we're so glad to be back. Chuta and I have been color coordinated if you're tuning in on YouTube or in our live audience yesterday and today. It's our new theme for the rest of the year. Um, and yesterday we were just talking about the India trip and how Chuta's doing. Got some live audience members. Um, for those that don't know, or if you're tuning in new, we do this live in the morning via Zoom and we have people that tune in and join us. And then there's you who listen out there, wherever you are. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being you, whether it's your morning. I don't know if people commute to work anymore or they're just staying home or both the other, whether you're in the shower, whether you're going to work, whether you're having lunch, whether it's your pre bedtime meditation, um, whether you're at the gym, thank you for being here wherever you are. And we love you. There are definitely people who still commute. We were seeing them. We were seeing them. They exist and we salute you. How are you doing this morning, Achuta? I am feeling blessed. Yep. She's feeling blessed. I'm going with. She's going for it. Anything you're blessed with? Um, I don't know. I don't know yet. Maybe I'll just start with the feeling and the blessings will come. The day, the day is still young. <laughs> the day is still young here in New York. All right. Well, we what we normally do is read from the Bhagavad Gita. We read from Bhagavad Gita so that we have our daily dose of spiritual connection, um, transcendental vibration of sacred texts to give us a jolt of enlightenment for the day. And then we... We pull out our, our, our meanings and realizations and reflections and we take it with us into the day. So where we were, there was some discussion that we were around verse 249, chapter 2, verse 49. Is that accurate? Yeah. All right. I like that one. It's a good one. All uh, right. So Krishna is speaking to his friend Arjuna. And he calls him Dhananjaya, O conqueror of wealth. Mm. Keep all abominable activities far distant by devotional service. And in that consciousness, surrender unto the Lord. Those who want to enjoy the fruits of their work are misers. I am. Um, I really like this, this particular verse because it works with the current month that we're in, which is known as Kartik. And it is an incredibly special month that started while we were in India mm -hmm. and we'll be going until around November 8th or so. Um, and according to lunar months, this is the like fourth month of the rainy season. The monsoon season is kind of winding down, um, which if any of us were in India, we kind of saw that it's real monsoon season is real. Um, I think even people in New York kind of found out that monsoon season is real. Um, I heard it, it rained pretty much for like six, seven days straight. It did. We gone. I was like, is did did we miss fall? Like what happened? <laughs> yeah, you all had monsoon season also. So monsoon season is so real. Um, and this month is totally electrocuted electrified and boosted with with spiritual energy and spiritual benefit um and there is a way to be busy at every moment of this month there's like if there were already festivals every day there's like double the festivals now during the month of kartik everyone is celebrating um it's kind of like heralding this this harvest season but even for us, it kind of feels like heralding the, the harvest of our our spiritual lives and our spiritual deeds. It's like a good time to really take stock of where we're at, what we've been doing, how we've been how we've been progressing, where we feel like we've stayed the same, what's been growing with us during our spiritual lives. Uh, and so Kartik for me is always a great time to take some spiritual inventory of my own heart and try and figure out what's up, you know, what's happening? How do I feel? Where do I want to be better? Um, how do I want to 
usher in a new year and a new season of my life, metaphorically, physically, spiritually, emotionally, etc. And one of the amazing things about this month is it celebrates God getting in trouble. And we don't often see this in many religious paths. Where else do you see, okay, let's have a month where we literally just celebrate that time that God got in trouble. And one of the things that, that happens is God gets in trouble with his mom. He does some really, really naughty things and his mom gets angry. And essentially she chases him and then ties him up. She chases him with a stick and then she ties him up. And we forever sing songs about this time that God got in trouble. But one of the things that Srila Prabhupada says about Krishna's mother, Mother Yashoda, is that she is constantly in a state of samadhi. And if anybody has done yoga, this, this state of samadhi is like a deep, total absorption meditation. A meditation where you have blocked out everything else, like you were saying, like cut out all the noise and just focus in. This is the definition of samadhi. And sometimes we might think of it as, okay, there's a yogi, they close their eyes, they sit cross-legged, they, they do all these mudras and all these things. And Srila Prabhupada says that for Mother Yashoda, samadhi means being busy. And so he says as followers in this Krishna consciousness, for us, samadhi means being busy, always being busy, but for Krishna, in the spirit of loving our dear most friend, and so I really like this idea of keeping the most abominable parts and activities that we are drawn to at bay by being busy with devotional service. That to me feels like the whole, the sum and the substance and the, and the spirit of Kartik month. Mm. You mentioned for yourself like this time to sort of almost look at the harvest of our own devotional lives and assess like what's up and almost like recommit ourselves. So what comes up for you when you start to look inside for yourself and make that meditation and that consideration? Um, what comes up for me is how many times I convince myself that I've got time. I can do whatever it is tomorrow. I can do whatever it is next week. I am not clinging to my spiritual activities and my spiritual life as if I were running out of time. Mm. And as, as a person who has counseled others and, and I've had conversations with people where I've said, you know, the, the problem is we, you, I, we often act as if we've got nothing to lose. We, we don't really believe that we'll lose the things that are the most dear to us. And if we were really, really, really focused on, okay, at any moment, I might, I might lose what is most dear to me, we start to act differently. We start to step up. We really start to make those efforts. We start to take our lives, the people in them a lot more seriously. And so for me, what comes up this year is, have I been acting like I'm running out of time? Have I been acting like I have anything to lose? Or have I been going along convincing myself It'll still be there tomorrow. I'll still be here tomorrow. It's fine. I um, <clears throat> I appreciate, you know, the Bhagavatam itself is predicated on this idea that King Prikshit Maharaj had seven days to live. And so one of the questions he asks is, what is the duty specifically of a person about to die? Because it's very relevant to him. And in the commentary, Srila Prabhupada mentions, you know, Prikshit Maharaj had seven days to live. We don't know if we have seven seconds, seven minutes, seven days, seven years, etc. And it's when these these crises hit that we take things very, very seriously. Um, and and the the premise is that we should always be taking it seriously um, because we don't know. And Arjuna himself, like, was brought to this very dire situation where he had to like and i think that like this why me question 
can get reconfigured in this light. Because when something happens, we think, you know, why me? Like, why, like, why is this happening? Is the question we often ask. And I think that really, the reality is that it happens to all of us at some point. It's not like, why me? It's like, this material world is designed not for us to get comfy, cozy and find our find our little corner of coziness that never that never works. But it's meant to crack us open in a way that we can actually become ready. Um, and 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 the, the secret is that we don't have to get to that point, but oftentimes we do. And so rather than when when certain things happen, this this why me question, it's more of like, how is this opening me up to accept something I wasn't ready for previously? Um, and so because the reality is that we're 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 all destined for the same. We're all destined for the same. I don't want to say destination because it's a repeat on words, mm -hmm. but you know what I'm saying. That there's a sense of of get ready now. Yeah. Get ready now. I was talking while we were in India. I was talking to a very dear spiritual teacher, and I said, "How are you?" And he said, "Well, I'm okay, but the numbers don't look good." The doctors tell me I have over a hundred small tumors in my lungs. I said, I don't like those numbers. And they said, well, Achitagopi, we've all got to go sometime. And I was like, I still don't like those numbers. And then he said, well, do you, do you want to stay here forever? I said, absolutely not. I definitely don't want to stay here forever. And he's like, then we've all got to go sometime. And there's this really stark idea about what is the nature of this place? Do we really want to stay here forever? We are trying to wring out whatever little happiness is there, but oftentimes we are met with birth, death, old age, and disease. And everyone is met with the same four things. And we see it happening everywhere. And we are really like okay but if i don't focus on that it won't exist hmm. and arjuna's brother yudhishthira maharaj finds himself in a in a situation where he has to answer questions from a mystical being in the middle of a forest and one of those questions that the being asks him is what is the most insane thing that you've seen it's the most insane thing it's a great question What's right? the craziest thing you've ever seen? What's the craziest thing you've ever seen? And Maharaj Yudhishthira's answer is the craziest thing that I've seen is that everyone, everyone sees death happening to everyone around them. And yet, and still we think it will not occur and will not happen to us. So like you said, this question of like, you know, why me? Why do, why do I have to suffer? Why do I have to go through all these things? Why do I have to go through the growing pains? Everyone is absolutely going through the growing pains. Um, and, and then the question is, okay, but do we really want this place as our end all be all? And the answer for everyone is no, everybody's looking for a place where there is more everlasting happiness, peace, that, that kind of comfort. And Bhagavad Gita is delineating and outlining that there is such a place but in order for us to get to that place, we've got to give up holding on so tightly to the misery that's here. Everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. I was thinking in relation in relation to the verse that you were just sharing, I want to read again. O Dhananjaya, the conqueror of wealth, keep all abominable activities far by devotion, distant by devotional service, and in that consciousness, surrender unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. Those who want to enjoy the fruits of their works are misers. I was just um, seeing a snippet of an interview with a prominent um, environmental activist who was asked the question about, like, do you actually feel you can make a difference? Like when you some sometimes in whether it's in in social causes or even spiritual 
causes trying to make a difference in the world, it seems so much like the odds are so stacked against you, you know, like, what can I really do to make a difference? Or is it really possible to achieve what we're trying to achieve? And it was, it was, um, it was Vandana Shiva, who's mm -hmm. Indian. And so um, she was referenced, she referenced the Bhagavad Gita. And, and she referenced this section of verses. Mm -hmm. And she said that there's this sense that you have a right to perform your action, but not the result. And so she was saying that I don't judge what I'm doing based off of the result that I'm giving. The question is, what is the right thing to do? You know, what is what is the right thing to do, regardless of how the outcome may be? And to determine that for myself and to um, apply myself as such, um, she said that gives life purpose. And that's where character grows. That's where connection comes from. That's where um, my strength comes from. Of us find, we have this calculating mentality of like basing things off of the results, which of course we should always be paying attention if something working or not and adjusting, et cetera. But the real question is, what is the right thing for me to do? What's my role in this? And that's what Krishna is causing or Ar urging Arjuna to take on. Like you're worried about like, what's going to happen here? And there's like, and at the very final instruction of the Gita is like, leave all of that to me. That all belongs to me. The success and the praise and the, the the winnings of everything belongs to me and the and the failure and the sorrow and everything also i'll take care of that as well and so you know i think in this sense of back to the verse back to what what you were sharing also this sense of like because it can get to this place of like okay well nothing matters anymore nothing matters anymore but it's like actually everything matters just not in the way you thought it was. Yeah, and I think that that end of that verse, those who desire to enjoy the fruits of their work are, are misers. Like it, it, it turns you into an emotional hoarder. Mm. It's like it turns you into this emotional narcissist. It can go one way or the other. Either nothing matters and you're nihilistic, or it can turn you into a bit of a hoarder where you're thinking, okay, like I've got to have hands on everything because if I don't, it, it'll all fail. It comes down to me and me alone. Yeah. And Krishna is constantly stressing surrender. Yeah, do the things. And also at the same time, surrender. Somehow both have to be true. And I was looking at this word, the word used in, in the verse itself Kripana phala hetava. Phala means the fruits, the the act, the result of an action. And the word for miser is kripana, which is sometimes defined as narrow-minded. Mm. So we use this word miser, like you're an idiot, you're a fool, or miser. Like it's, I think you look at like this Ebenezer Scrooge type person, like as a miser, or counting his money. But the reality is like, what I what I love so much about Vedic philosophy is that it, it in some ways it's not... Um, it sometimes can seem to be like dismissive or critical of like quote unquote material life. But actually it's just saying like this is not in your best interest. Hmm. Like creep creepana means narrow minded. Like you're looking at a small picture of reality. You're looking at a very narrow window of what's available to you. Like you're missing out on a much, much bigger picture. Like that's the message. Like you're missing out. You're not seeing the bigger picture. You're so caught up in the minutia, in the here and now, this particular instant, trying to control the situation to go a certain way. You're missing out on the bigger picture and the opportunity that's available to you if you can let that go and here open go. your and open yourself up. Yeah a bigger purpose of your life, a bigger purpose of what's happening to you and around you, and a bigger 
purpose of how you can engage with the world in a more meaningful way, rather than thinking you need to control and and possess and own the particular outcome. Like you want to have a certain material outcome, sure, you go for it, and that's all you're going to get. You'll get some wealth, you'll get some uh, fame, you'll get some recognition, you'll get the pretty partner or whatever it might be. Like you can find ways to manipulate material energy and get what you want materially, but that's all you're going to get. And so he's saying, don't be a creepina. Don't be a miser. Don't try to squeeze out and control the material circumstances to go a certain way because that's all you're going to be left with. And like Dhruva Maharaj, it'll be like you were searching for diamonds and you settled for the broken pieces of glass in the material world. So don't settle for the broken pieces of glass because that's all you'll get. And they just end up cutting you and bruising you and you feel empty and lost. And it's like, we just keep asking yourself, why do it feel so empty? Well, maybe because you're searching in empty places. So what don't be narrow minded. And, you know, like it's, it's word nerd time, right? Like, so word you, nerd. <laughs> you, uh, you can't have this word Kripana without Kripa. There's mercy in there. Kripa is mercy. Kripa is that thing that actually we are all after. So there's Kripa, but if you become a miser, if you become so narrow minded, it's like you'll miss it. You will miss the mercy that is inherent in every situation if you try to so staunchly control it all yourself. If you are looking after this enjoyment and trying to really really truly it, it's it's like there's this aspect of being without mercy if you look at like nadanam najanam that like i don't want this don't want this but if you have kripana it's almost like here reciprocate with me because krishna is the great reciprocator he'll tell that later on but almost like telling krishna i don't want your mercy i need you to distance yourself because i'm going to do this all on my own but if we take away that that last suffix of the word all you have is kripa you have mercy that thing that we are all hankering after that thing that we need to get by and so sometimes it is as easy as as letting go of the baggage letting go of the extras in the, in the words in our lives emotionally in our hearts and just embracing the creeper. Yeah, I think in a lot of ways, so much of spiritual life is really coming to terms with the fact that the things I thought were so important aren't really as important as I thought they were. And it's learning to understand what's really important. Um, and that's that just takes time because we've invested so much into an idea and culture and society invest so much into selling us an idea of what's important. And spiritual life is just helping to unlearn false truths about the nature of who we are and what makes us happy. Hmm. Kimberly, we're turning to you now. What are our takeaways for today? And if anyone else has some gems or nuggets they want to have read out a little phrase a little word something something that we can remember put in our pocket and take with us thank you like we're taking away that samadhi is being busy with devotional service we are all met with the same four things so we should get ready now and let go of the minutia so we can see the bigger picture Achuta, what final word? Um, in addition to my Kartik inventory, I think I want to start adding in. Okay. Yeah, maybe I have been acting as I have all the time in the world, but where has there been mercy also? Uh, because it will seem really bleak and like I've gotten everything wrong, but there have been so many moments of grace. So where have those moments of grace also shown up and illuminated my life? 
beautiful. <clears throat> For me, it is, um, it's just, I love this idea of, of re, re assessing what is fortune and what is misfortune <clears throat> and all the things of, you know, missing out or not getting my way or wanting more um, and learning that so many things I hanker for, um, I don't really need. Um, and so letting that reminder sort of um, re refocus me and ground me. Hmm. All right, everybody. We love you a lot, wherever you are, whoever you are. Know that you are loved. Know that you have a family of people tuning in all over the world for this podcast that are connected with you via the, what do you call them, airwaves, digital waves, spiritual waves, heart waves, wherever you're tuning in from. We love you. Please be well. Please take care. Tune in to us next time, and um, we will see you all again very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.